let's talk about uh, the engine controls that you can use when you handle chemical. We'll talk basically today, we'll talk about two, 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 two uh, applications. One is chemical handling. The second one is engineering control for uh, chemical storage, right? So chemical handling, as we know, most of the lab will sometimes we'll see this happen because there's too many students or too many uh, experiments. They have to do it on the bench, right? So they have to do it on the bench. Of course, they will have risk. Uh, they do not have enough uh, engineering control system or film hoods, right? So the and sometimes we also see like certain equipments. Okay, you are uh, we putting on the bench that equipments that generate vapors, or occasionally we will see also uh, measurements of toxic powders uh, at the open bench. That is also a concern. Of course, if you measure uh, DCM, the the dehydrated cultural media is still fine. But if you are me measuring, you know, carcinogenic uh, powder, um, then maybe you should do something on that, right? So the best solutions to protect you from these chemicals is by having a film hoods, right? Film hoods also called kabot wasap. There is actually two options of film hoods, and they are ducted and ductless film hoods. All right. So the ductile film hood is basically we call it the LEV, local exhaust ventilation, because it has five components. Because DOSH specify a ductile film hood should have five components. Uh, the uh, LEV should have five components. The first one is the hood, and then um, the the duct, the air cleaner, the fan, and the stack, which is the chimney. All right. So so that is the ductile film hood, the LEV. All right. So where's for ductless film hoods? Because a uh, ductless film hood, from the name you know, it uh, doesn't has um, the duct and also the chimney. So it basically has a hood, the fan, and also the air cleaner, which is the carbon filters or HEPA filters, right? So we call that engineering control systems, all right? So um, so these tools is the options that you have, but you will, op you, I believe you already observed most of the things that shows here are in a box, is a box like you know equipment, right? So why we need, need we need a box, right, to handle chemicals? Why not we have something like this, you know, a suction arm or canopy? Uh, we would not say you cannot use, but I will say it's not sufficient to draw out all the contaminant. Why? Because there is no uh, containment. Because when you open up the chemicals on, on the open bench and your suction arm is at the top, um, maybe the suction arm can only withdraw 60% or 50% depending on the distance, right? So 60% of the film, but the remaining will go back to the room or you will inhale it. So that's why we say it's not that safe, right? If you use the suction arm or canopy hood. There is a place where you use canopy hood, especially when you handle heated film, like those that are AAS system, furnace systems, those systems you, 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 you should use a canopy hood, all right? So because you draw out those uh, film and uh, exhaust outside, right? So why we say that uh, when you handle liquid chemicals in the room temperature, the suction arm is not that efficient. Why? Because of this concept, the Graham law, the air molecules or the chemicals are very light. So once you open the, you know, the, the bottle, the lid, the chemicals vapors will spread in the split of second. So even before the suction arm can withdraw them out, they already spread and into the lab. That's why you put yourself in a risk. So that is the reason why most of the film hood looks like a box because we want contain. We call that containment hood. Uh, the chemicals should be released inside the box. And I would say, uh, if you're using film hood, make sure any handling is inside the hood and the distance from the such opening is should be six inches and and uh, further, right? It shouldn't be too near to the opening, right? So um, that's why we have the air velocity, right? So when we open up a, a contaminant uh, chemicals in the film, in a box, like a, a film hoods, 
So we make sure our AFS velocity at, at the opening is 0 0.5 meter per second and above, right? So if you convert to feet per minute, it will be 100 feet per minute, 100 feet per minute, right? So this is the minimum requirement for any film hood, be it the ducted film hood or a ductless film hood. Maybe some of you will say, if I increase the air velocity, that would be better. Example, I increase to one meter per second or two meter per second, would that be better, Joseph? Actually not, okay? Why? If you increase your fan, you know, your air velocity to one or more than one, it's not, not good. Because, especially for ducted film hood, you have a very narrow, narrow duct, okay? Maybe 10 inches or 12 inches duct. So if you increase your fan speed, you increase the air velocity, what will happen, it will, it will be, you know, the, the air will try to squish into a small duct and tend to have, you know, turbulence inside the film hoods. If you have turbulence inside the film hoods because the suction is too strong, it tends to leak up as well. So it doesn't mean that you have a strong air suction, it will be good. No, okay? You should be within 0.5 or sometimes for ductless, it can go to 0.4. The most is point. Uh, is the most the maximum is one meter per second. Actually, DOS says that 0.5 to one meter per second. All right. So why do we need to have 0.5? Right. So um, because when we have 0.5, uh, when we have some minor changes in pressure, that the room pressure is we can contain the chemical in the uh, film hood. But there is two scenario that we need to take notes that we shouldn't do in the lab. Okay, you can advise your clients or you can advise your colleagues is don't run across your film hood, especially when your film hood is centering, you know, chemicals. What will happen if you move swiftly uh, through, uh, cross, across your film hoods? This will happen, like what I show in this video. You are creating an aerodynamic and you are basically draw out the chemical because you create a vacuum. So the chemical will be sucked out, a leak up from the chemical, from, from the film hoods. So uh, you can't see it, but I think this uh, graphic will show it uh, to you clearly, right? There's also another reason, another situation that you shouldn't do uh, is try to open your search quickly, right? So you, you, you quickly open up your search and this will happen. The chemical will be directly uh, exposed to you, especially when you exceeded the label that is safe, right? So make sure you remind your colleagues shouldn't do that, right? So, but anyway, if you have 0.5 meter per second up to one meter per second, you are safe in, in the situation of open and close the door because when you open the door, the room pressure changes a, a little bit. So it's fine if you have 0.5, you shouldn't be, uh, it, the chemical will not leak up. Right? Or sometimes the air condition system, we, all know, we also not affect if you have, uh, you, you, you will not also not cause the chemical leakage because you have 0.5 meter per second, right? But one thing you have to remind your colleagues, you never, never uh, blow, uh, you know, a fan in towards the such opening. I do see some of the lab, they do that because the room, the lab is very warm, so they have a you know, fan, standing uh, fan, and then they blow it in front of the such opening and, you know, they can't reach 0 0.5 meter per second if you do that. Okay, so there's a key factors when you consider a film hoods, be it the ducted or ductless. Uh, the first one, of course, is the regulations. This will be a very basic introduction. If you want more of this information, of course, you can talk to your CHRA and also your hygiene tech tool, right? So I'm comparing the ductor film hood and ductor film hood so, so that you can have an ob objective understanding of what you should consider when you go for ductor and when you go for ductless. There's a few regulations here, basically the DOS regulation and also the OE regulation. The DOS regulation is the use regulation I mentioned early in my presentation. For ductor film hood, every year is compulsory for you to run the LEV test, all right? To run the LEV test. Um, of course, the hygiene tech tool is the person that should run the test. 
they will have to check the uh, FS velocity at the such opening and also the dark velocity, the static pressure, and they will prepare the report for you. All right. So, so uh, this is compulsory. And uh, from my understanding, uh, I think after 2014 or 15, all the newly installed ducted film hood should have an air cleaner as well. Okay, should have an air cleaner uh, before the fan, right? So for ductless film hoods, um, it's not compulsory, but uh, observation industry uh, customers will do the LED test as well. Uh, basically, they will check the FS velocity, they will check the fan speed. Um, then uh, basically, it's, it's easier to, to, to run the test, LED test for ductless film hood. The price should be cheaper, all right? So uh, that is DOSH compliance. Uh, uh, one more thing, of course, ducted film hoods, you, your duct design has to be approved by professional engineer, all right? Whereas for ductless, there is no duct, so there is no need to comply to this specific requirement signed by PE. Basically, what you need is to prove that your ductless film hood has uh, complied to international standards, example like X-ray, SEFA 9, uh, NFX uh, and etc. Right, these um, standards actually validate the ductless film hoods. Now we, let's go to the DOE. Okay, we have two regulation here. The first DOE is the Clean Air Regulation, which govern the chimney. We lemon term we call chimney license. So when you install a ductless film hood, at the first 30 days, you should submit your uh, application to the state DOE by the competence person, DOE competent person. It's not hygiene head tool, but the DOE competent person. The typical cost will be for 4,000 to 8,000, okay? And you also need to do emission tests as well, okay? So uh, that is the requirement for ductless film hood. And for a ductless film hood, there is no chimney, there is no discharge of chemical outside the building. So there's no need to comply to EQ, uh, the, the environmental quality clean air regulation. Then we go to the next DOE regulation, which is the schedule waste regulations. I make a mistake here because for the ductile film hood nowadays, due to the regulations, you also need to have uh, clean air, which is the carbon filters before the fan. So which means that carbon filters is a used filter and also classified as schedule waste. Uh, the code name is SW410, code SW410, all right? So, which means, be it a ducted or ductless film hoods, you need to uh, handle the use filter, okay? Or maybe you can ask the vendor to handle for you, right? So that is the regulation part that you need to consider, the first part. Then the second part is the, the, the facility, the structure. Uh, where, where the, the building, does it has uh, enough uh, makeup air to come into the lab and then you draw out the air when you, when you, um, you know, when you have adapted uh, film hoods. Uh, you need to make sure you have enough makeup air so that your pressure in the room is at the, it's not too negative. You would not feel like, you know, not enough air to breathe. So that's important, right? Be the dark and darkless film hood as well, you need to also make sure the system has gone through a containment test. I will show a video here, a short video here, to show you how they do a containment test. What, what is the containment test? Is basically they want to make sure the chemical that release inside the film hood will not release out. So they are challenging the film hood using a very light chemical which is a synthetic chemical called SF6. The SF6 will be released in the, in the, in the film hoods and they will check at the, at the opening, see whether uh, you know, the, the reading has exceeded 0.05 ppm or not. If you exceeded 0.05 ppm, which means you failed the containment test. The problem for the, the ductal film hood in, the, in Malaysia, uh, especially the local uh, ductal film hood is they do not run this containment test. So, so um, that's why you, you, you have some question marks whether there is a leakage or not, right? So let, let me show that. We start with, um, we start with the, the smog test. You can see the pattern of smog. 
So on your right, the red color is not efficient. On the left, the green color is efficient. So this is the SF6 setup. They release the SF6, and then they use a sensor to test it. So everything is below 0 0.05 ppm. So there's no alert, no alert, no uh, it's safe. Now he move on to another one. Look at the readings. Exceeded 0 Okay, so obviously this is fail. Uh, they can't, they, they failed the containment test. So this video I took from the, uh, the internet. The Sunway here is not the Sunway pyramid that we have in Malaysia, right? Just <laughs> to make sure, right? So that is for be the ducted film hood, ductless film hood, you have to go through this containment test. And especially those international standards like ASRA, SEFA 9, NFX uh, you know, 15211, all these standards, they already require the manufacturer to go through this uh, containment test. If the fuel hood has complied to these uh, you know, standards, um, so you, you will confidently say that they have passed the containment test, right? So let's talk about the ductless swing hoods. The ductless swing hood as well, you need to comply to the, you know, the containment test, you need to comply to regulations. So when we talk about Dallas swing hoods, uh, the containment test for Dallas swing hood is perfect. Not most of the time it's 0 0.00, um, you know, PPM. But the challenge for the Dallas swing hood is basically uh, you need to make sure the application that you use inside the Dallas swing hood is suitable, the, the air cleaners, the carbon filter that used in the Dallas swing hood is compatible with the chemical that you handle, all right? So most of the time, the, the vendors should do a validation before they sell you the system to validate, um, you know, whether your application is suitable or not, and how long you can, you have to change the filter. So I would say any, any, uh, um, uh, any, uh, you know, the filter frequency change any uh, more than six months or less than six months is considered not uh, feasible. All right, I repeat, if the validation came up and it says that you need to change your filter every three months, I would say Dallas film hood is not feasible for you. All right, you should go for Dr. film hood. But if the validation came up, says that your filter can last for one year, and the uh, vendors should check, most, most of the time we will check whether the filter is saturated or not, all right? So more than six months or to one year or one year plus, I think that is feasible, that is feasible, okay? So I hope these parameters will help you to make wise decision. This is the list of uh, the reason why people go for darkness spring hoods. I talk about this more because not, not many people aware about darkness spring hood or you know, know at what situation you should choose a dark swing hood, all right? So the dark swing hood may not be as more expensive than the dark swing hood, right? It could be cheaper, but make sure you know when you choose a dark swing hood and when you choose a dark swing hood. There's a few reasons here people choose for a dark swing hood. The first one, of course, there is not enough makeup air in the room. Uh, as I said just before, there is not enough air in the room. If you put another ducted film hood, it draw out more air and make the room become too negative, not enough air to breathe. In this situation, the best option is go for ductless film hoods if you need uh, additional film hoods, right? Number two, 
Uh, when the laboratory has no structured access to in, install duct work, I do have come across customers like this because they have too many ducts outside, a chimney outside. There's no place for the additional chimney. So in this situation, they will go for the ductless stream hoods, right? Number three, when the lab lack funding for extra duct work, because duct work is not cheap, you have to go for DOE. Um, so upfront investment is quite high. Uh, in, it's very expensive, so not justifiable to go for ducted. May as well go for ductless. Number four is the lab has no intention to comply to the clean air regulation, the chimney license. All right. Number five, the cost of building infrastructure, retrofit, and uh, you know to install a new film hood is uh, prohibited, cannot approve. All right. Number six, the management want to save energy and operating costs in long run. Okay, I want to explain this clearly. Ducted film hood is the most energy consumed equipment in the deck. Okay, let give you a, a perspective. A five feet ducted film hood, it draw up maybe 530 cubic feet per minute of air. Um, if you on it like four hours per day, five days a week, um, then I estimated the cost of electric bill, uh, electrical bill, uh, just the acorn to Acon bill to cool out, cool down your your room will cost you seven hundred to nine hundred ringgit per month. Seven hundred to nine hundred ringgit per month for a ducted film hoods, right? Whereas the ductless film hood, because it recycle, it doesn't change. Um, uh, the the energy consumption is much much lower. So when the labor number seven, when the laboratory is going to sustainable, environment friendly or green index building, we do have customers like. Example like Sun Power, where the whole factory is, uh, you know, platinum uh, green beauty index. So they go for a ductless system, right? So let's move on. Uh, these are some of the examples, all right? 